Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged. Talking rubber. Well, mostly anyways. <laughs> Making a rubber stamp on my Rolly Lasermatic MK2. So I have the 30 watt version, it goes 10 or 30 watts. But so if you have a diode laser, 30 watts, 20 watts, you're probably going to be just fine doing rubber stamps. I think that it'd be very time consuming with a 10 watt, but you could probably do it and then you're going to have to cut out the rubber, which may be the better way to do it anyways. Uh, but with the 30 watt, I was able to cut the leather, but it took six passes, 300 millimeters per minute. And I, you know, I think that uh, I'm going to leave some other videos in the description. I've watched them. They're great, so I'm going to try and combine all of that into this video, but I think they're still really great for reference, and you're going to learn a ton more, so I'll leave those in the description for after this video. A lot of my favorite channels, you know, of course, Clack Shack, Rich Louisiana Hobby Guy, and one other surprise, but uh, actually, I reached out to Craft Closet uh, because I saw they had the rubber stamps. They were out of stock at the time. They got them in, so they sent them to me, and uh, here we tried them out. This is my first time making a stamp, so I watched the channels, I learned what I could, threw the, uh, the rubber down and said, hey, let's try this. I definitely learned a lot. Now, I did this with both uh, rubber and with wood. I saw, um, I believe it was Louisiana Hobby Guy, but I can't be for sure, uh, did it in wood, you'll see here on the left. And for him, it worked just as well as it did on with rubber. So I wanted to put that to the test myself. What I learned about rubber, it is messy. So what I would suggest is that you do all of your rubber at once, right? So because you, it's going to get your machine dirty. I'll put up some video of it. Uh, yeah, and it, it, it got all over my machine. It's nothing bad or anything. It's just that I had such a nice, beautiful, clean machine. And then, you know, I had to clean it. it took me about 10 minutes. But uh, still, I just wanted you to know it's not quite like doing wood where all of it evaporates and just all of the wood goes out, uh, all of the wood smoke. With the rubber, you are going to have little pieces. It feels, it looks, and it looks like... Uh, an eraser, right? And when after you use an eraser, you have all that little bits left. And that's kind of how it is with making the rubber stamp. I just ended up with all of those little bits. Again, we're super easy to clean up, but uh, I got everywhere. I ended up cleaning my lens as well. And I was doing a lot of testing. Uh, I don't think that should dissuade you. You should just be prepared. And like I said, if you're going to make a bunch of rubber stamps, just do it all at once and then clean your machine. Whereas doing the wood, it was just, you know, it's just like another day at the office and it worked pretty well. I'll get into that in a minute. What I learned over time is that using a crosshatch worked much, much better. It made it very clean compared to how it did in a normal uh, engrave. So we'll go up here. I wanted to show you a couple of tricks here. Uh, first of all, like I said, I hit crosshatch, which means you're going to probably do it at about half the speed and power that you normally would. I mean, I always run it 100% when I can. Essentially, you're doing it twice. But that's another thing that I learned is that you do want to get it as deep as possible. So I was thinking I wanted it just deep enough to where it would be separate so that I, uh, you know, I would have as little jiggle of the rubber when you push it down, you know, because I, I noticed that sometimes maybe that will make it uh, less crisp. But on the other hand, if you look at my pictures, you will see that it does leave, a, if it's not deep enough, you're going to leave a little bit of the, of what you don't want. So if I was to do it over again, I would do it a little bit deeper. Uh but it did turn out nice. Uh, one thing that I also did, so the crosshatch, which made it, uh, like I said, a lot cleaner. I used air, and that made a huge, probably more than anything else, air difference. Because what was happening 
is a lot of what it was cutting away was still uh, not, it wasn't getting removed. And so it wasn't as efficient. And I was looking at some areas that didn't get engraved. But once I turned on the, the air, made an ultimate difference. So I do suggest, usually on engraving, you don't use air. In this case, I would. Uh, so we got the cross hatch, the, of course, bi-directional and the air. And another thing, and you can try doing this either way, is to use ramping. So ramp outer edge. And what that does is it just, it makes it kind of like a pyramid. You know what I mean? So it has a foundation to hold your rubber. Uh, whereas if, if you don't do that, the letters may be a little bit more fragile. Of course, they might. Uh, it might make it to where they smudge a lot more. So I actually point. I did point zero five, which was too much. So I would suggest maybe a point one or maybe a point two, just something to where it's going to give it a little bit more stability. And since most of you have probably never used that before, I think that's a, a fun thing to learn something different. It was brand new to me. I, I had seen it before, but I had never used it. I had even forgotten where it was. And it's right here in the advanced tab. So uh, I will show you a picture of the one that I did too much. And I thought it, I did it so much that it that the letters weren't going to show up correctly, but I was wrong. Uh, they actually did look pretty good. And I would say overall, the one that I did with the ramp that was still too over ramped was still the best one I did. Sorry to make a short story long on that, but I think that a lot of people haven't done that before and I really wanted to, uh, you know, go into that. Cutting. Now, it is difficult to cut rubber. Uh, you know, it feels like the first couple of layers or whatever go pretty easy, but to be able to completely cut it out is very difficult. I ended up with 300, 100, with air on six times to be able to actually cut it out. Now it cut it out fine. Uh, it, it looks good on the edges. I mean, they're not perfect, but it looks pretty good. What I've seen in other videos is people just cut it maybe like three times at a hundred because that gets most of the way through. And then you could just use scissors or whatever to cut it the rest of the way out. Either way is fine. If you've got a lowered uh, powered laser, I would suggest doing that. I think I mentioned that at the beginning. And this will make a great stamp, very close to what you would get if you went to the store and bought it, because I went and I bought a couple of stamps. And what I did is they have the little, uh, underneath the stamp itself, there is a little pad that kind of takes the impact. And you could, there's a lot of other things you could use like craft foam or something to replace this. But what I wanted all of my testing to be equal so I use the same exact stamp head for every single stamp. So I cut it the same size and then I just replaced this, put it on then took it off and then, you know, put on the wood one, whatever I needed so that I would get uh, the best testing that I could to see what worked and what didn't. And all of them worked really well on paper. Uh, I tried to stamp them all on wood and to no surprise, the wooden one on wood did not work very well because you don't have, you can see how the hard on the hard does not allow it to really uh, adhere. It, it works, but the problem also is that with every single stamp, unless you have the right type of ink, uh, maybe a pigment, it's going to run. Right. So it's it, it looks really good when you first stamp it on with the rubber, but then in a few minutes it seeps into the wood and it just looks terrible. I also tried this on finished wood and it worked much, much better. Still not perfect, but it was, you know, 95 percent as good as paper at that point. And that was only one coat of finish. So if I was to do that again, I could probably nail that. With the rubber stamps, I, I definitely wouldn't suggest doing that with the wood stamps. But for most of the time for stamping, it's going to be things like leather or paper or, you know, cardboard, something like that. So the wooden stamp is actually going to work pretty good. 
And it almost has maybe this like old school look to it, which might actually be better in some circumstances. It just depends on what you're looking to do. Now, if you're going to give something as a gift, though, I mean, rubber just, come on, it just seems more like a stamp. And I think people will appreciate that a little better. And it does work and it does look good. So even with the wooden ones, I would suggest uh, air and a crosshatch. I tried it without air on the wooden ones. And what happened is it ended up very sappy looking. And so once I turned on the air, it actually was much better. So the things that you're usually uh, looking for when you engrave something that stop you from using air, I don't think really uh, apply when you're making a stamp. So it was just, again, I have pictures. This one here that I'm showing that this is the one without air you can see. And then at the top, you see the one I did with air. You see how it's not all wet and sappy looking. So in my opinion, much better. And then you see, of course, the one here on the far end is the one that has the ramping. And the one in the middle here is the one that didn't. So it really looks like the one with the ramping is not going to work correctly, but it actually looks pretty good, like I said. And that's over ramped. I would say if I did this at 0.02, it probably would have looked really, really nice. But I think I went over that already. So that's kind of what happened with me and the uh, rubber stamp. And uh, maybe you guys have some other questions. You can let me know. I Maybe I could try it. Uh, but it was a fun experience. I learned a lot. And if something comes along where they're like, hey, we need you to make some stamps, I know I can do it. And that just adds one more thing to my repertoire on the laser. So, of course, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And if you have any questions, this channel is for you. So let me know. All right. Love you all.